Do I like my Ram Power Wagon more than I like my Jeep? Should I have gotten the diesel instead of the Hemi? How's it been handling the camper? What's my gas mileage like? Those are all great questions that I got asked last week when I was at Overland Expo West. And I thought, you know what? I need to do an update video and give you the answers to those questions and more and show you some of the things that I've done since the last update. We've got a lot to talk about today. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad. And today we're gonna to talk about all the updates I've done on the Power Wagon and answer many of the questions that I've been getting asked over the last week. Number one question, do I love the Ram Power Wagon more than my Jeep? The answer to that is no. I love my Jeep. That Jeep will take me anywhere I wanna go. And I know that if I get into the thick of it on a trail, I'm gonna get right through it. The Power Wagon, I love it. It's for a different mission. Power Wagon is for going long distances, like my wife and I are getting ready to head off into Virginia, all the way across country. This is gonna be nice and comfortable. It's good for easy to moderate trails. You know, it's a Power Wagon, so if I do find myself in a sticky situation, I'm gonna get through it. But I'm not gonna intentionally go rock crawl with this thing. This is for exploring the back country, going and finding epic camp spots, and really just having a good, comfortable, nice, quiet drive on a long, long trip. So. I love my Jeep more, but I do love the Power Wagon. The second most asked question I got last week was, should I have gotten the Ram 2500 with the diesel, or am I happy with the Power Wagon 2500 with a 6.4 liter Hemi? That's a very good question, and one I'm still having a little internal debate about, but let's just talk through this for a second. So the standard Ram 2500 diesel is 500 pounds more than the 6.4 liter Hemi. And so when you want an off-road vehicle, a little less weight makes a big difference. Now the Power Wagon has lockers front and rear, it's got a sway bar disconnect, and it comes with a factory winch. That's all stuff you would have to add on to the diesel 2500, which is already pretty expensive. So the cost can start to climb. Now, the diesel does have a better payload capacity and a better towing capacity. Hmm, there's an argument for both sides, I think. But here's the kicker. The third most asked question I got was, how's my fuel economy? Let's be honest. With 37 inch tires and that four wheel camper back there, it's not great. 11, 12 if the wind is at my back. If I had the diesel, I'm sure that it would be 15 plus, which would be very nice. Plus, there are some long range fuel tanks, auxiliary fuel tanks that you can get for the diesel. There are none available for the power wagon. So I'm stuck with a 31 gallon tank and a couple extra roto packs that I'll show you that I've mounted up here. But having a little bit better fuel economy, adding some auxiliary tanks, and an extra payload capacity on the diesel, there's something to be said about that. Well, just my luck. The forestry service is over here doing what they do best and that's taking care of the trails, but you might hear a little bit of noise in the background. I wanna talk about some of the updates that I've done on the Power Wagon in the last couple of months and I'm not gonna go from bumper to bumper. Uh, there's a whole playlist of the things that I've done up to this point that I will leave a link down below for. I just wanna talk about the things that I've done recently. We'll start with these A-pillar light mounts. So these are the KC Flex Air 4 lights, same lights that I have on the bumper. But the question I've been getting asked, and I'm gonna get in trouble for this, is what is this mount? And I don't know the answer to that. This is a simple bracket A-pillar mount uh, that a friend gave me. He sold his truck, and so he gave me these mounts, and I don't know where they came from. I did a little research and I was just hitting a dead end. I don't know where they are, but they are super nice. And it's nice to kind of angle those off to the side so you've got a little bit of a ditch light when you're wheeling in the dark. Now, one unique thing about the Ram Power Wagon over the last several years is they put some big Power Wagon decals. And this one came with decal on the rear and a decal down the side over here. And to be honest, I always thought it was a little much and I like the cleaner look. And so I've removed those and I have put a Trail Recon logo down on the black stripe down there. I think it's pretty cool. I'm really happy with that. Now we were just talking about fuel. And so I did mount a couple Rotopax fuel cans on the four wheel camper. So these are mounted where the jacks on the four wheel camper would go. So they're definitely going to hold up. And these are front, the mounts are 
aluminum and they're from AT Overland and then they are just some two gallon roto pack. So I have one on each side, but I could add two more to the rear. So I would have a total of four roto packs. I don't think I need that now, but maybe when we do a trip up to Alaska, that might be a pretty good option because again, my fuel economy is not great, but I'm pretty happy with these. They're lockable, they're very secure, and they're just a clean mounting solution. After Regina and I got back from our 10 day trip up in Washington, she made a request. She said, boy, it would sure be nice to have a small cooler in the back of the truck for drinks and snacks. So when we're on the road for a long period of time, we're out on the trail for a long time, we don't have to stop and get in and out of the camper every time. And I was like, that's a really good idea. Problem solved. So we got a 25 liter Dometic refrigerator that I put back here. It fits perfectly front to back and we still have plenty of room for tools, recovery gear, camera gear, all our bags. It works out really well. Now this is plugged into the 110 inverter. Now the disadvantage of that is that inverter is only supplying power when the vehicle is running. So if I wanted continuous power to this, I'd have to run a special 12 volt, uh, which wouldn't be a problem. But at the end of the day, we're just putting drinks in here and small snacks that we're just gonna eat during the day. So if we shut the truck off for a little bit, it's not gonna harm anything in here. So this actually works out really well. Plus uh, it comes in and out very easily. I'm not gonna secure this down and if I wanna move this to a different vehicle or uh, and just not have it in here, it's easy to do. So this works out pretty good. Two other questions that I got asked a lot last week were, now that I have had the Carly suspension on here for a little while, we've done a couple trips on it, how do I like it? And the answer is, I love it. The tuning that they have done with these shocks is so nice on road, but especially when we're on those long washboard roads, just soaks it up, it has been great. Now I did complicate things a little bit by throwing that four wheel camper up there. And so we had to go with a little stiffer spring in the rear. And I put in a Helwig sway bar, which stiffened it up just a little bit. But because it was still sagging, because we put, that's a lot, that, that's a heavy beast back there. We put some airbags back there and uh, the airbags have helped just kind of level it out a little bit. But the airbags are a little finicky. They have what's called a push air fitting on them, which I don't love. And so I've had to tinker with those a little bit. Still trying to maybe come up with a different solution. I think push fittings are not ideal for an off-road vehicle that's getting jostled around all the time. The other question I get asked, uh, is how do I like the 37s and am I going to go to 40s? And the answer is no, I don't plan to do that. I think, you know, a big 40 inch mud terrain tire, it looks cool, looks beefy, but for what we're using this vehicle for, which is long trips on the road, easy to mild tr backcountry trips, the 37 in an all terrain is great. The BFG KO2s are a lighter tire and yeah, they run a little smaller, but that's okay. But they're super quiet and they get the job done. It's just enough rubber to get me to where I need to go. All right, well, obviously I didn't choose the most level ground to film this on, but it's all good. At least I'm in the shade and nice and cool today. Okay, since I got the power wagon and upgraded those tires, one of the biggest concerns that I have personally been worried about is not having a full size spare. Obviously, you know, I can, I've been bringing a tire repair kit with me, but just to be able to swap the tire with a full size is always very nice. And now we've come up with a great solution. So we have this ultra swing from Rigged and this thing allows me to now carry a full size 37 inch tire. And it's really nice because now we can put the trash roux out here so we're not storing our trash inside. This thing is super, super beefy. Now the great thing about this is it attaches to the trailer hitch there and it's got this mechanism inside and I can't really show it to you, but basically what it is is there's a bolt that goes through and when you put it in, you tighten down that bolt and it expands these two pieces of metal in there and it just locks into place. And let me tell you, this thing does not budge at all. I've been paying very close attention to see if it's shaking around and it doesn't. It is rock solid on the trail. Now I did add two things, uh, three things, but I'll show you two real quick. We got the license plate mount, which adds a light to the license plate mount. So the cops won't mess with me and I was able to mount my rear camera back here. So I got an aftermarket backup camera and I put it back there. And even though it sits low, still have plenty of visibility, which still allows me to use that full 360 degree camera. So I'm super happy with that. Now to open this up, there's a really stout handle right there. There's a little pin back here. And then this guy just swings out. And now I guess this actually works out because you can see that I'm on a, 
a little decline and this is not just rolling in it actually it's pretty firm and I like that it's not just flopping around I don't have to lock it in a place that's pretty solid uh, now we did get the optional table back here so there is a nice little table right here it's got a little slide out and that is great because we like to spend a lot of our time outside of the camper and so when we're preparing meals when I'm making coffee this is the perfect place to do it so I am very, very pleased with this solution. Now, the one question I'll probably get asked is, can you still tow with this? And the answer is yes, up to 10,000 pounds. So you can see right here, you still have a receiver that you can hook up a trailer to. So you've got a full-size spare, you've got a table, and you can still tow with it. I am super happy with this. Now, something else we've been trying to figure out a solution for, which I think we've finally got, was getting in and out of this very tall camper uh, with a step ladder just is not ideal. We had this really nice aluminum step ladder that actually folded perfectly flat, laid right on the floor, but it only came up to like right here. And what that meant was your first step in or your first step out was a doozy. And it just wasn't safe, uh, especially as often as Regina and I are coming in and out. And so what I did was I went online to an RV store and I found a very nice step ladder aluminum step ladder so all i had to do was mount this rail to it and then you can see here we just put this guy on here attaches with a couple pins very quickly at least i hope it's very quickly because i'm on camera right now there we go and there's some cotter pins that we put in there but then you just pull this guy out much nicer much safer it's a great solution now, and he has these little uh glow steps on here so you can see at night it's a really good ladder they're not cheap but for the safety factor it was worth the investment another question that i got asked a lot last week is am i happy with the camper and should i have done something else maybe built a rack and put a rooftop tent up there or gone with something permanent like an alu cab setup and the answer for me is I am super happy with the camper. The four-wheel campers is so ideal. There's so much convenience in there for Regina and I. It does add some complexity to the suspension of the vehicle and the, and the off-road capability of it. But look, for what we're using this for, it's perfect. And the cool thing is, up until a couple days right before Overland Expo, I had actually pulled the camper out and I was doing truck stuff with my truck. I was going to the dump, I was hauling furniture, and it's nice to be able to set that out, put it up on the jack stands, and go use my truck to do truck stuff. And then when we're ready to head out on a trip, like we're getting ready to do, you put it back in there and you are ready to go. If you have something like an alu cab system, which is a very, very nice system, that's kind of permanent. You're not taking that on or off. And the rack systems, I've talked about this in the past with the Gladiator, I just wouldn't do that again. I think, you know, everything that you put in the back of the bed of the truck just gets so dirty. And having something that's enclosed like this, you just get so much more comfort. It's a little cleaner. It's nice to go to bed up in there at night. I do like the camper. Probably one of the most mentioned comments when I was at Expo last week was, man, that thing's so much bigger in person. And it is a big truck. And you throw that camper on there, you lift it, you put 37 inch tires. It's a beast, but I love it. I just love it differently than I love my Jeep. And the good thing is, as I know many of you are excited to see some new Jeep content, well, when we get back from this long trip to Virginia and back, the silver Jeep is gonna be ready to go. And I'm gonna take that out and have some fun on some trails, do a little camping with it, go exploring. We're gonna get the silver Jeep back out on some good adventures. This thing's not going anywhere. When Regina and I go out, this is probably what we're taking. But I'm excited to get the silver Jeep out. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me for this update. If you have not been over to trailrecon.com, go check it out, guys. We've got some great merchandise over there and lots of Overland products I think you'll enjoy. Until next time, thanks for watching.